The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of you, the God of mercy, perfect for mission and forgiveness, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for us. A reading from the book of Joel. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, it is near. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their like has never been from of old, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering, and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people. Sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priest, the ministers of the Lord weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please read the portion of Psalm 103 printed in the bulletin responsibly by half verse. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us. Nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins. Nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so is his mercy great on the earth. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sins from us. As a father cares for his children, so does the Lord care for those who fear him. For he himself knows whereof we are made. He remembers that we are but dust. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry, but as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, 
in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. When you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward, but whenever you pray, Go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face. So that your fasting may not so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father, who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I love making a good impression. You're welcome. <laughs> a few months ago, I did something in my home for which I had been saving. I had a uh, custom closet installed. My closet um, consisted of that heavy wire shelving, which I detested the way that Joan Crawford hated wire hangers. And if you didn't understand that, enjoy your youth, okay? Anyway, I had a company come in and, and design a closet for my specific needs, shelving and, and drawers and, and that kind of thing. But of course, in order for the company to come in and put in a new closet, I had to completely empty the old closet of all of its contents. And I remember thinking the same thing that I used to think every time the bishop would move me to a, a new church. Where? Did I get all this stuff? How does one person accumulate so much? It was a, a, a pain to take everything out of the closet in order to start over with something new, but it would have been silly to not go through all of the stuff while I was cleaning that closet anyway. Boxes of stuff that I thought, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll deal with that later. 
and never did. Clothes that I couldn't wear anymore or didn't wear. Shoes that I needed to put on and just wear around the house for about five minutes to remind myself of why I had not worn those shoes in years. Pictures and letters and cards that had meant something to me uh, at the time meant something in, enough that I kept them, but if they're boxed up on the floor of a closet, then do I really still need to save them? So as I said, it was a bit of a pain to go through all that stuff, but it was also cathartic. Uh, I gave away what others could use. I threw away what uh, no one could use. Uh, threw away some things that were personal, but useless to anyone else. And when the closet was finished and my clothes were arranged by season and by color, when the, the things that I wanted to keep were put in plastic bins and not boxes from the liquor store, <laughs> I felt something that I didn't expect to feel. I felt peaceful. Just this morning, I read an Ash Wednesday devotion written by a member of the United Methodist Church that I attend when I'm in the mountains of North Carolina. And the author talked about the sense of relief that we can find when we declutter our personal spaces. But then she compared that to our spiritual lives. And she wondered what we might need to clean out of our lives that may be keeping us from having the relationship with God that he wants to have with us. If there's ever a time for that kind of introspection, Lent is that time. I don't know how we have devolved into thinking that God cares about some of the things that we give up for Lent, but the scriptures are clear about what God wants from us. God wants our hearts. God wants our devotion. God wants a genuine and holy relationship with us. And if we don't have that relationship with him, then it's time for some holy introspection to figure out what needs to be decluttered, cleaned out, thrown out of our hearts. I'm going to give you my, my own example. You may know that the United Methodists have been blessed to share your space for one year now. Just a week and a half ago, we celebrated our one year anniversary as a church. But even as we celebrated that, I was thinking back to a devotion that I had read a couple of weeks before that. Uh, one of the devotional books I read in the morning is uh, by Max Lucada. It's not deep, but then neither am I. But uh, it's called uh, Grace for the Moment. But the thing I especially, I do like Max Lucada's writing, but the thing I especially like about this book is that it has columns for the reader to also write his or her thoughts in, in their uh, reflections. So on January 21st, not of this year, but January 21st of last year, because I'm going back through the book again, January 21st of last year, the devotion was entitled, A Heart Like His. And after I read the devotion, I wrote something in the margins. I wrote, remember this was a year ago, I wrote, I may have to seek some professional help for my anger, anger that borders on rage and is in danger of turning into hate. And I knew even then that if I decided to keep that anger, I was never going to have the relationship with God that he would want with me. But as it turned out, I did not need professional help, at least not as we defined that. What I needed was God and St. Thomas and Father Wallace and Deacon Scott and all of you and a whole lot of holy introspection. The question was this, 
even though I could not have formulated this question at the time. Do I want to hang on to my anger, or do I want to have the kind of relationship with God that he wants to have with me? And if I chose the latter, that I wanted to have the kind of relationship with God that he wanted to have with me, I knew it was going to be a pain. It was going to be a lot of work that I did not want to do. But I also knew that the peace that I sought would only come when I had decluttered my heart. Every single one of us has or has had something that keeps us from having the relationship with God that he wants to have with us. What needs to be cleaned out of your spiritual closet? It may not be anger for you. It may be greed or it may be judgment or it may be an unwillingness to forgive or an unwillingness to choose love. It may be a lack of grace. I don't know what it is, but I know that Lent is the time for such personal and spiritual searching and work so that you and I can hear the words of the prophet Joel again. Yet, even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, the first Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection. And it became the custom of the church to prepare for them by a season of penitence and fasting. The season of Lent provided a time in which converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when those who, because of notorious sins, had been separated from the body of the faithful, were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to the fellowship of the church. Thereby the whole congregation was put in mind of the message of pardon and absolution set forth in the gospel of our Savior and of the need which all Christians continually have to renew their repentance and faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church, to the observance of a holy Lent, by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word, and to make the right beginning of repentance, and as a mark of our mortal nature, let us now kneel before the Lord, our Maker and Redeemer. If you are able, please do. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth 
Grant that these ashes may be for us a sign of our mortality and penitence, that we may remember that it is only by your gracious gift that we are given everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Savior. moment I invite you to come forward to receive the ashes. We will come forward in the same way we do at communion.
will please kneel for Psalm 51, found on page 266. We will say it responsibly by half verse. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness. And cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions. And my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned. And none is evil in your sight. And so you are justified when you speak. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth. A sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me. And will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness. And the body of you in the Hide your face from my sins. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew the right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. And take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again. And sustain me with your gospel spirit. I shall teach your ways to the wicked. And the sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from death, O God. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your grace. Had you desired it, I would have offered sacrifice. But you have the light of your offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit. A broken and heart, O God, you will not suffice. The Litany of Penance is found on page 267. Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, Lord. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. We confess to you, Lord. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people. We confess to you, Lord. Our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. We confess to you, Lord. Our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work. We confess to you, Lord. Our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. We confess to you, Lord. Accept our repentance, Lord, for all the wrongs we have done for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord. For all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts towards our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord. For our waste and pollution of your creation, and our lack of concern for others who come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, 
and let your anger depart from us. Favorably hear us, for your mercy is great. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation. That we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of sinners, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live, has given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardons and absolves all those who with truly repent and with sincere hearts believe his holy gospel. Therefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit that those things may please him which we do on this day, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. brothers and sisters from the United Methodists who join us this evening. Um, the service will continue with Holy Eucharist. Um, just a reminder that we do not have an offertory procession today or an offertory today, but there is a plate in the back on your way out. Uh, please feel free to give. Um, and communion, all baptized, no matter what tradition, all baptized are welcome to receive communion. So we come forward just like we did for the ashes. You can receive the bread with your hands. You may intink the bread or eat the bread. And if you wish to receive the cup, guide the cup to your, to your mouth. Or if you wish to intink, you may intink. And if you don't wish to do either, just cross your hands and you'll get a blessing. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us an offering and sacrifice to the Most High. We stand and join in the offertory hymn.
Eucharistic Prayer 1 begins on page 333 in the Book of Common Prayer. Page 333. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was in every way tempted as we are, yet did not sin, by whose grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer unto ourselves, but unto him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Christ, 
and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this most holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy for our own manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bound and duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is given to thee, preserve 
thy body and soul and your blood. So. Christ, which is given to thee, preserve thy body and soul and everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is given to thee, preserve thy body and soul and everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is given to thee, preserve thy body and soul and everlasting life.
Turning to page 339, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank you for the that thou hast feed us in these holy mysteries, for the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and thus assure us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us. And we are very favorites of this Lord, and of thy Son, the blessing of coming of the all faithful people, and our also salvation to the world. of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you, and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you. 